I am I am relieved to say that this weekend, November the 27th, 2021, 135 pound undisputed champion Tiafimo Lopez is back finally after a 13 month layoff, taking care of his IBF mandatory after he's also been on a 13 month layoff, George Cambosos. Tiafimo Lopez, 16 and 0 with 12 KOs, WBC franchise, WBA super, IBF, WBO, ring magazine champion. George Cambosos, 19 and 0 with 10 KOs, the IBF 135 pound mandatory. The fight's going to be taking place on the zone here in the States in the Madison Square Garden Hulu Theater. The small room is what they call it. Seats, um, from my understanding, I've been there multiple times, but basically I believe it's about 5,000 or so, no more than eight. You know, I, I believe it's 8,000. But anyway, moving on, the undercard is going to feature a title fight between an Azinga Fuzil versus a Kenichi Ogawa. That's for the vacant IBF Super Featherweight title, the one that um, Tevin Farmer lost to Jojo Diaz. Jojo Diaz lost on the scales at 130 pounds. Uh, Raymond Ford versus Felix uh, Caraballo. Rashid, um, Rashad Mahdi versus Nicholas DeMario. Zili Zhang um, versus Craig Lewis, Christina Cruz versus Mary Gwen Vilanga, Ramla Ali versus Isla Vera, and uh, Anthony Christopher Herrera in a debut fight. You know, solid card, but, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. I'm fatigued talking about this fight. Even now, I actually believe that it's happening this weekend, but still, I'm kind of like, uh, okay, all right. Tiafimo Lopez has lost so much momentum, so much momentum since losing to Vasil Lomachenko October the 17th of last year. As you can see now, November the 22nd, 2021. Lomachenko has had a fight since then, had shoulder surgery and a fight since then against a uh, Masayoshi Nakatani who Tiafimo Lopez struggled with, but Lomachenko looked his best against. Tiafimo, I mean, Lomachenko was now returning December the 18th. Um, I'm not sure if it's the 18th. I believe it's the 18th or the week, pri the week prior taking on Richard Comey, and he's expected to look good there as well. Now, George Cambosos, I, I'm going to be honest with you. There's nothing on his resume outside of his fight. Also, um, a 13-month layoff when he fought Lee Selby on Halloween of last year. Before that, Mickey Bay, all the other names, you know, you don't know of. And one thing is, he's listed here on BoxRec, BoxRec at uh, five, nine and a half, but it's no way that he's taller than Tiafimo Lopez, who's listed at about foot five, foot eight. So, you know, I gotta be honest, you know, I still have Tiafimo, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tiafimo loses any of his titles on the scale. I mean, his titles on the scale. I wouldn't be surprised if it goes the distance and Tiafimo doesn't look good in all 12 rounds, you know, and I won't be surprised if Tiafimo loses the fight. I'm not going to be, I, I'm not, I don't think he's going to lose, but with everything that's been going on and all the distractions that he had outside of the ring leading up to them finally getting to the ring, everything with Thriller, which I'm not going to talk about too much in too much detail in this video, I do think he has a legitimate chance to lose this fight. Uh, Big J, I'm going to bring you a with your concerns because I got to be honest, I'm fatigued talking about this fight. I'm tired. Well, yeah, I'm tired about this fight too. But, uh, you know, um, I'm the same as you. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Tiafimo lost on the scales or put in a bad performance because he's had all that, you know, that, all that time off. Um, you know, but then again, I wouldn't be surprised if. Um, you know, he knocks he, he knocks George out. So it it really it, I think either way it's going to be a disappointment. And it's going to be like oh well we and we waited twelve months for that. Unless George of course pulls off the win. If George pulls off the win, mm -hmm. it's going to be break You know, but if Tiafimo wins, everyone's going to be like nah, well we waited that long for this to happen. So I uh, mean you know I mean obviously I'm still going for George to win, but you know I mean he's had. I mean, at their age, I mean, what, George is 28, Tiafimo is 24. A 13-month layoff at their age shouldn't really be any factor. I mean, they're both young fellas. They're both young blokes coming you know, in their prime. Yeah, but the different a training camps, though, can take a, a, a toll on the fighter, all the different, you know, rescheduling. 
Yeah, true, true, true. I mean, it's all, it's all, it's all a mental game, is it? But yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm just like you. I'm, I was fatigued about this fight. I just wanted to get over with, and I just want George to crack out Tiafimo and then move on to the next thing. But I mean, they're already talking about Tiafimo versus Haney. Like he's got to get past George first. Yeah. So. Yeah, but yeah, you know, I'm I'm just like you. It's like you know, let's just please get it done. And um, you know, uh, I've got uh, I'm going into this fight with uh, no expectations, no disappointments. So that's that's the way I'm looking at it. Yeah, I, so I don't see that's the only way you can look at it. Yeah, yeah, because you know, here's the thing: Tiafimo Lopez, the bigger fighter, the stronger fighter, seems to have the better skill set. You know, seems to have the, the better power. the power. Seems to have the better chance to you know, knock out Cambosos. And when, I, and when I'm looking at Cambosos, I'm wondering, okay, what can he do? How can he win? Just like I was looking at Crawford versus Porter, where I was like, how can Porter win if he doesn't knock Terrence Crawford out? Can he outbox him? And yes, at the beginning, you know, to, to, to go back to Crawford Porter, which just ended this weekend, yes, the first several rounds, he was boxing. You know, but what happens when Tiafimo turns it on? Can Cambosos box and win on the cards against Tiafimo Lopez, not just because it's in New York, but does he have the skill set and everything I've been seeing so far, he's he's more of a pressure fighter himself. You know, I, I'm not I don't know if he can go in there and box. Well, he has to prove that in the ring, doesn't he? I mean, he, we can predict you know, bo boxing's one of those games where you know you can predict you know a clear victory for someone and they get the shit kicked out of them. So yeah. it, George has to prove that in the ring. I mean, does he have the ability to do it? Yes. Does he have the power? No, not really. But he can wear he can wear Tiafimo down. You know, if he stays away from that from that power, he can wear him down. Uh, but you know, George has to prove that in the ring. Yeah. Another so another question you know, is his chin. You know, have you seen any footage or anybody in the comments? Let us know what fights to look out for. You know, like has George been cracked before? You know, have we seen him take a good shot? Because it's because in this fight it seems as though he's going his chin is definitely going to be tested. Definitely, I don't. I can't think of anything where he has been cracked. So his his defense is pretty good. But then again, you know, you know Lee Selby, you know, blown up featherweight. Mickey Bay passed his best. Mm -hmm. um, you know, any other fighter has he really fought a you know a real threat at one thirty five? I think the answer is probably most definitely no. Yeah. So. I mean, T.T. Freeman is completely in a completely different league to anyone he's fought. That's a fair comment. You know, to, say anything, to suggest anything else is, is ridiculous. But, you know, I mean, uh, you know, T.T. Freeman is probably, what, the biggest, one of the biggest punches in the division, if not that biggest mm -hmm. puncher in the division? Would that be a fair comment? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I think so. Him, him, way, him Davis, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, or Tank. Yeah, but Tank jumps up and down between no, one yeah, and it, it's, it's safe to point. say T.T. right now, yes, you know, bar none. You know, is yeah. the is the yeah, biggest so. center right now in the top guys of 135. Yeah, and uh, I don't I don't think I've ever seen George get cracked like you know have to handle the power of Tiafimo. So as I said, he has to prove that in the ring. Mm. That, that's all he can say, really. Is that he has to prove that in the ring, and I hope he does. As I said, I recommend many times. I hope he gets in there and kicks the shit out of Tiafimo. Yeah. But, you know, so. so so what what's your keys for um uh Kimbosos to win? From my side, he's got to do a lot of moving, jabbing. Don't worry about if the fight's going to be boring. Don't try to be on the inside too long and stay away from the long arms and the body shots of um of um of uh Tiafimo Lopez. He's going to have to do a lot of moving to me and like pure boxing. He's going to have to box because everything that we've seen, I don't think he has the power to um to hit Lopez Tiafimo with with something to keep him off of him, nor enough power to be able to buzz or stop to you female so for me he's got to go for a, a victory on the cards and he's going to have to try to box yeah i agree uh the old in and out body 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 yes, head yes. Out, body 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 head yeah you know, he, he's got really got a the best way to you know is to destroy his ribs and don't let him don't let him breathe so that that would be the best yeah, thing to destroy his ribs be, and don't let him breathe. he's going to have to be able to get in you know mm. so it, well it, yeah well yeah, on that Lomachenko fight when he actually took the fight to him, you can work on the inside of Tiafimo. So yeah. you've just got to be prepared to take that risk. And, you know, if you can get past that, you know, swinging arm of his, get on the inside, crack his ribs, you know, no problem. From, so, what, I, but, from what I've seen, um, it's, you know, from what I've seen, my opinion is uh, Cambosos and, Lo and Loma are about the same size, seem as though about the same frame or so. 
you know, and mm. those body shots that Loma, they were lifting him. They were moving and him. And him off the ground. Yeah, they, they yeah, were. Yeah, let's get him off. They, they were moving him. Right. So it wasn't until yeah. Loma realized on the cards that he was losing, or as they say here in the States, you know, he didn't start downloading the data until it was a little too late. He started taking those risks. But still, even even in, you know, it was, it, wasn't it the last round? That that Loma that Tiafimo took over again and was like, all right, I'm gonna close this thing out. You know, he yeah, went back he, to the body. Yeah, he definitely won the last round. Yes. Yeah. And a lot of people think a lot of people think that's what got him the picture, but he had won long before that. So I mean, by round seven, he was already up. Yeah, pretty what, much. Yeah, I had one? yeah, I had yeah. Um, Loma losing by two rounds. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, the, and he, the, he needed that uh, last round to get a draw was, on my card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. He, he the last round was a definite shutout for T. Fimo, and that's what that's what definitely got him over the line. Not that he wasn't already over the line anyway, but that, mm-hmm. that made his case solid. So, and I think I haven't seen that fight in what twelve months. So, yeah, yeah. I watched it. Yeah. I watched it a few times. That was a very competitive fight. You know, and it, it, was, and it, it was. And you know, I wonder if Lopez versus Cambosos has a rematch clause. You know, because. Oh, if, if Lopez loses, it plays well. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh, he'd, but have be, I mean, he'd have to be mad. Not to me. How many times in boxing has the underdog come along, beat the, for sure, Victor champion, and, yeah, he's run off of the belts. That's happened plenty of times in boxing, especially yeah. heavyweight. So, so, I mean, wasn't Jermaine Taylor underdog to Bernard Hopkins the first time? Yes, he was. Yeah, the first time. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and you know, so yeah, TFM would be mad not to have a rematch clause. Absolutely insane. But you know, so that's, is that's this not fight for us to say. On, is this fight I'm looking? I'm on the main event page right now, and they have. I Gallo- don't believe so. What'd you say? I don't believe it is. But if you, I haven't checked in like 24 hours. So if you could check now, that'd be good. Yeah, I, I, I just checked. They only have the gal the Gallon fight versus um. Um, Aloye yeah. or whatever the guy's name is, but no, they don't have local yeah, Cambosos. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. That might it might be on it might be on the free because normally with um, uh, the uh, zone cards they put them on the they put them on the normal. Uh, oh, well, you got, channels, you got but... to have the zone over there um, in Australia. So there you go. It's likely going to be on um, the zone in Australia. It, it'll be on the zone. I think it's like two, three bucks a month or whatever mm-hmm. it is. For Australian things, whether or not Fox Sports picks it up, I don't know. Normally, with Ebony Bridges cards, they do. They put it on five hundred seven or five hundred six or whatever you know the normal uh, basic cable, for lack of a better term. But this, I don't know. So it's okay. been so up and down. So, but oh. yeah, if they haven't if they haven't advertised it now, they're probably not going to put it on main event. Okay. So, well. Um... We will be here all week talking Lopez Cambosos, um, the fight week schedule, because it's Thanksgiving this Thursday. Um, tomorrow is the media workout. Wednesday is the final press conference, when likely you'll hear from me and Big J again. And then um, on Friday, the weigh-in, and of course, we will be here on Fight Night covering the fight, also with a post-fight stream. It's a very busy weekend in boxing, boxing despite the big uh, um, holiday here in the States. Uh, closing thoughts, Big J? Uh, happy Thanksgiving to all you Americans. Have a great day. Um, as I said, I want George to beat the living dogs. Have him bring the tiles home to Australia. Australian boxing needs this badly. Yeah. So, you know, let me ask you a question. You'll know the answer to this. Who was the last Australian to win a world title? You'll know the answer to this. Well, oh, Jeff Horn. Bingo. How long ago was that? Yeah, yeah. I can't even. I can't even remember. That's been a while. July 2017. Yeah, that's cool. July 2017. Yeah, it seems like it was further so, away than that. Yeah, it seems like it was eight years ago, but it's only been four. But still, so, it's still a long time, though. You know, it's still a long time. Yeah, yeah. Four and a half yeah. years or so, right? Mm. Yeah, that's right. I'm speaking to Jeff. He might come back to the ring if the offer is right. He said that the other uh, day. Oh, man, I well, you know, that we, we'll talk about that in another video. I, I think he should stay where he is, you know, and hopefully, yeah, wife, damn right. hopefully his wife, damn is, right. you know, probably had a talk to him. But anyway. Take the time out, like the video, subscribe, follow us on Twitter at uh, 5 View 360 T Street Controversy, and also at Big J, um, Old Mate Big J on Twitter, and on Instagram at T Street Controversy. Our rankings are updated in accordance with the sanctioned, body, sanctioned bodies mon- monthly, WBC, WBA, IBF, WBO. Take your time out, like the video, subscribe. See you guys later on.